there. Well, for the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to talk about uh, exactly one of those things. Uh, an article that's been widely shared, 24,000 shares uh, last time uh, we checked. Uh, an article, a column in uh, the Israeli news site Haaretz, that's a daily liberal newspaper in Israel, uh, with this headline, it's time to admit it, Israeli policy is what it is, apartheid. It goes on to say, I used to be one of those people who took issue with the label of apartheid as applied to Israel, not anymore. Uh, the man who wrote it is Bradley Burston, who's a columnist and senior editor for Haaretz. Uh, Bradley, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Good afternoon. Great to get you on to talk about the article that's... Uh, uh, provokes a lot of discussion, it's fair to say. And um, before we bring in some other people to talk to you about it, I'd just love you to explain to the people listening exactly what led you to write this piece. Well, in the last several weeks, there have been a number of dramatic incidents, some of them tragic incidents, underscoring a situation in the West Bank in which Israel... Uh, operates two entirely different sets of laws, uh, one for Jews and one for Arabs. And, uh, and it is that circumstance and the policies that underscore that uh, or that underwrite that situation and that, and that enshrine it that, that lays uh, behind this whole piece. And, and also the circumstance that the government has here in Israel has essentially stopped uh, striving altogether for a two-state solution and is basically moving the other direction toward uh, a, a kind of creeping annexation of the West Bank. So just explain, as you do in the piece, a couple of the particular incidents or, or policies that you would claim typify this apartheid. Well, uh, two of the more dramatic. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a horrifying incident in which terrorists firebombed a Palestinian family asleep in their beds. Uh, a father and his 18-month-old uh, son were were murdered in the in the incident. Uh, uh, the, uh, the mother was uh, burned over 90% of her body, and uh, after uh, a week or so, it developed that. Uh, this family would be ineligible for the financial support and compensation that Israel automatically uh, grants to uh, Jews uh, living in the West Bank and, and in fact, uh, uh, all Israelis uh, uh, within Israel proper. Uh, the other incident uh, had to do with a law that was recently enacted, which makes stone throwers liable to up to 20 uh, years in prison, uh, the, the law does not specify that it's in fact directed at Palestinians, but in fact it doesn't have to because of just a week after the law was uh, enacted, there was an incident in which Jewish settlers protesting uh, the dismantling of a couple of buildings at a settlement uh, threw rocks, bottles of urine and furniture at Israeli soldiers and police. And the response of the government, of, of in fact, of the prime minister, was to essentially re reward the stone throwers with a uh, promise of 300 new settlement homes. OK, and we're going to bring in a couple of people who are waiting to speak to you who uh, take issue, uh, I know, with uh, some of what you say and, and the word apartheid. I just want to ask, though, if, before we bring them in, uh, you start the piece by saying, what I'm about to write will not come easily for me. I used to be one of those people who took issue with the label of apartheid as applied to Israel. So, so what did you take issue with before? Why did it used to be an inappropriate label in your mind, but it now is not so? I, I believe that there was, uh, for many, many years, uh, a very strong effort in Israel to try to democratize, to try to find a solution that would uh, provide uh, as uh, provide a, a democratic solution uh, to some extent to enfranchise Palestine, to make it possible for for Palestinians to have to have the rights that in the West Bank they're right now denied. And I think, and I've spoken with many people who grew up under apartheid who've told me the same thing, that they felt for many years that the situation in the West Bank was not apartheid and that now Israel is moving in that direction. 
Well, we've got uh, Bradley Burston on with us live on World Have Your Say. And uh, Bradley, lots of people have been discussing this on facebook.com uh, forward slash World Have Your Say through the day. Some of them in support of you, some of them like Yuval in Haifa in Israel are posting. I'm the last person to support Netanyahu here in this government policy. But seriously, the word apartheid is wrong here and used for propaganda issues only. There is occupation, there is conflict. Simplifying it, does it know justice and does not bring it anywhere close to solving it? Um, not that the people who call it apartheid care about that. They want, in the name of, quote, justice, uh, the end of a Jewish nation state. Just reply to that comment uh, before we bring our other guests in. Just to be, uh, to be brief, I love Israel. I hate these policies. They are undemocratic. Some of them are inhumane. I want Israel to be a country which is a true democracy, and I think it's the only way Israel is going to survive. Let's bring in Ran Bar Yoshafat, who's an Israeli activist, and uh, Benjamin Pogrand uh, with us from Jerusalem, author of uh, Drawing Fire, Investigating the Accusations of Apartheid in Israel. So uh, something you focused on in the past, um, uh, Benjamin, too. You're born in South Africa, too, which is pertinent to this story, of course, but lived in Israel for nearly 18 years. Um, hello to both of you. Hello. Hello. Why don't you start, Benjamin, and uh, reply to what you've heard from Bradley? Um, what yeah. do you say in response to this piece? Yeah, well, sure. I didn't just live in South Africa. My whole life was involved in investigating and reporting and analysing and condemning apartheid. So I have a particular knowledge of it, and I did, my latest book on the subject came out last year. Look, it's just over 20 years since apartheid officially went, but it's still a very potent, powerful word. And you've got to be very careful how you use it, because it was such a totally evil system. To apply that word to Israel is a heavy thing. And I read Bradley's piece. I have sympathy with him. It's a highly emotional piece. He's deeply upset, but he's also totally wrong, because it is not apartheid. And to use the apartheid word is both wrong factually and also politically unwise. And I've gone to explain that. But to just take two of the examples that he mentioned just now as examples of apartheid, the uh, firebombing and the so far not the automatic um, uh, aid for the family of the victims. Well, it's a simple answer for that. They're Palestinians. They're not Israelis. Israelis get automatic compensation. And he said all Israelis. What he didn't say was that includes Israeli Arabs. So it's not a racial thing. It's a matter of a different group of people. They've, they have to apply to the Attorney General um, for compensation. And I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen, it's unjust. Secondly, in regard to stone throwers, punishing stone throwers is not an apartheid act. I don't know about him, but as in my career as a journalist in South Africa, I twice narrowly escaped death because of being stoned. I'm terrified of it. I've got no sympathy whatsoever for people who throw stones. What I'm more interested in, just a couple of weeks ago, I, I was out of the countryside, I think I read this somewhere, two Jews were arrested for throwing stones at Palestinians. I want to see that the full rigor of the law is thrown at them as much as it is against Palestinians. That is a test. So to use the word apartheid is just misplaced. Let's let, let's let Bradley re reply sure. to that then, Benjamin, because no, you make some very interesting sure. points. Um, uh, on that first story, uh, Bradley, that Benjamin mentioned, uh, the charge is that you can't possibly use the word apartheid because actually if this was Arab Israelis um, involved in this awful uh, story of Ali Saad, and they wouldn't be discriminated against. First of all, I understand what, what Benjamin is saying, but uh, as a person who actively occupied myself for many, many years in the Israeli army and was involved in, in, in watching how the policies worked as, a, as an active participant, I have to say that Israel operates two entirely different sets of laws on the West Bank, one for Jews and one for Arabs, there are two million Palestinians there who do not have the right to vote. Their freedoms of speech and assembly and movement are severely limited. At the same time, uh, I think it's fair to say that Jews can engage in violence with relative freedom from any negative consequences. The statistics on actual arrests, charges and convictions of Jews settlers engaging in almost, almost daily attacks on Palestinian property and livelihoods uh, are are 
extraordinarily, uh, they are almost unbelievable. Uh, the the number of Jews that have actually been charged or or even arrested for these almost daily acts. And and so what it's uh, my problem with the whole situation is a system of laws which deals uh, which with with these two parallel systems of laws that have nothing to do with one another. Jews are treated a certain way. Arabs are treated a, a completely different way. And in that sense, there is this total separation on the West Bank between the treatment of, uh, you know, of human beings which, who happen to be from different groups. Ran Boyoshifat, come in here and um, talk to Bradley. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I want to say to the audience that uh, maybe are not so familiar with Israel, you have to differentiate between people who are citizens of Israel and people who are not citizens of Israel. By the way, if they wanted to be citizens of Israel, I wouldn't have a conflict. Now, of course, we have a different set of rules. One is for the citizen and one is for not. Arabs are full equal citizens in Israel and have full equal rights from the Arab Supreme Court judge who sent my former Jewish president to jail to the commanders in combat army units. But I want to say, you know, in South Africa, you had a bench for whites and bench for blacks, buses for whites and buses for blacks. This is obviously not the case in Israel, where Jews, Arabs, and other minorities all live together. Again, these are those who are citizens of the state of Israel. The Arabs have the same percentage in the university as their population. But I want to say that the branding of Israel as an apartheid state was created in order to make people not think about the morality of the issue. It just makes you say, Israel is apartheid, apartheid is bad, therefore Israel is bad. This is not a discourse of building relationship, but rather ending them. It's not, it's not for peace, it's for hate. It's not for helping Jews or Arabs, but rather hurting and hurting both sides. But I want to comment on something that's for me super crucial. Um, no one yet knows about the terror attack that happened that killed, um, uh, that killed Ali Dawabsha. No one knows if it's a Jewish settler. Uh, I want to understand uh, will uh, Bradley change his mind? Now will, will we not be an apartheid state if we'll discover that it wasn't? But furthermore, let's, well, say on, let, let, let's let him answer some of those questions. I mean, that point, Bradley, about using this word, uh, the fact that it's so emotive that, that, that causes these divisions between people that we're hearing here, does that in itself make it a counterproductive thing to raise at all? I think we're in a situation uh, where we have become inured to uh, what happens in the West Bank. We've become numb uh, to what happens in the West Bank. The, the wall that we've built from the West Bank uh, is not only concrete, but it also has to do with not being able to see or feel what goes on there. Uh, I think the idea of an emotive word is not necessarily a bad idea when the situation is horrible. And not only horrible, but it's getting worse. And the problem is that there is absolutely no effort on the part of this government to reverse that trend. In fact, uh, what we're seeing in the, for example, the nomination of, a, uh, of, of Danny Danone, the new uh, UN uh, ambassador delegate, is a person who, uh, whose views are uh, are those who would, he would he would uh, have Israel take over nearly all of the West Bank, claim it, uh, without granting Palestinians rights, and so we're, so the the direction that we're moving is is one which is which is diametrically opposed to peace. Bradley, thank you very much for coming on the program. Thanks to Ran and to Benjamin for taking part as well. It's a small flavour of a conversation we could frankly have for. Uh, well, all evening uh, here um, and at least uh, many days to come after that. Um, it's a conversation you can continue on facebook.com forward slash world have your say. You heard uh, the different points of view around it then. Uh, respond to that and continue the conversation at facebook.com forward slash world have your say and we'll speak to you this time tomorrow. <laughs>